Hello and welcome to the special transmission on the ASEO summit and of course uh, we are here to discuss uh, the important and historical summit that took place earlier today and this is going to be of course something uh, very important to remember and important to also act upon. The SEO member states of course have um, signed a joint declaration including of course important countries such as China, Russia, India and of course Pakistan and among others uh, that have been part of this uh, very important summit in the heads of uh, governments meeting. This is important not only in terms of the kind of summit that Pakistan hosted, but also in terms of the way forward and the roadmap that this has established for the SEO member states uh, to move ahead and to develop a collective future. The Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Shabazz Sharif, emphasized the need for trade and cooperation, um, addressing this uh, Council of Heads of Government earlier today and talked about the need uh, for increased collaboration between the member states, particularly in terms of trade investment, but also in terms of security dynamics and to move beyond the political considerations of each individual country or each individual member state and move beyond that to work together in close coordination with each other. He raised important aspects of sustainable future that is of course important and integral to all and also in terms of issues that affect us all including that of Afghanistan and uh, the issues of safe havens being provided uh, over there to the terrorist groups and organizations that have affected Pakistan but also have uh, the potential to impact the entire region and the entire world and the fact that a stable Afghanistan is the need of the hour and that the international community must realize that. He also emphasized on the continuing genocide in Gaza, Palestine and talked about uh, the fact that an independent state of Palestine is the only solution and way forward and that this is something that uh, needs to be emphasized by the international community and of course Pakistan calls for an immediate ceasefire of what is going on in Gaza. This is important also in terms of the evolving dynamics and the fact that the member states also included Iran among others who are of course part and parcel of what is going on in the entire world and have their own say and their own abilities to make a difference and of course make the kind of decisions that impact us all. There is, of course, also the aspect of trade and investment that is very important, particularly in terms of how many of the member states um, have uh, experienced sanctions, continue to experience sanctions and unilateral policies against their economies, which, of course, are impacting them and the entire region and limiting the potential of trade and investment and collaboration that can happen. And this, of course, includes increased tariffs against Chinese products, uh, sanctions by the West uh, in terms of uh, the countries like Iran um, and Russia. And and of course the fact that Pakistan itself um, uh, is also uh, struggling and trying to get into collaboration with regards to gas pipelines um, or more cost effective uh, petroleum products via Iran as well in terms of and in light of these sanctions. So we're going to be taking a look at what these joint declarations uh, that have called uh, for uh, more equitable measures to be taken as part of the WTO guidelines and to go against uh, the kind of protectionist policies that have not helped member states. Uh, what is that going to mean especially when we talk about action on the ground and in the ways uh, that of course we can explore that in the future. There is of course a fact that this entire summit has also provided the opportunities uh, for countries to engage with each other including of course uh, India and Pakistan and Pakistan with of course other countries such as Russia and China and this has helped uh, in terms of uh, making this multilateral platform truly what it is and to enable and ensure that the framework and the joint declaration that has been sent set today is going to be something that will of course be important for the future as well and so we're going to be talking about the uh, the individual relations with different countries as well as part of our discussion but focus on this particular joint declaration and the way forward and the framework of course that has been finalized for this and more as always in the studios I've been joined by senior analyst Farooq Batafi and Raja Faisal and we've also been joined online by Major General Zahid Mahmood uh, who's a senior analyst and we've also been joined by Julia Milankova who's program manager Russian International Affairs Council thank you very much gentlemen and ma'am for joining us and being a part of the discussion today uh, General Zayed I'll start with you in terms of your take on the kind of SEO summit that Pakistan has hosted how historic and important this has been for the country and the region and also in terms of the joint declaration that the SEO member states have agreed upon and signed together in terms of the kind of framework it provides for actual action to be taken for increased collaboration in the future yeah, thank you very much for the invite and my regards to the all participants. Uh, I think it's a, it's a great day for Pakistan. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we have concluded with the session of this SEO. Um, this, this, this is a great day and uh, to me, I think this can be a new beginning 
of a new Pakistan exploring trends, uh, exploring new ways, the future. And I think this is this can be a very, very good start. Now, coming over to this present SEO, of course, it is uh, more focusing on the uh, multilateral issues, multilateral collaboration, collective approach. Uh, but within the member states, I think the bilaterals are also extremely important. This SEO is, uh, has happened uh, considering the environment uh, in the world, uh, considering uh, the Russian application in uh, Ukraine, then whatever is happening in Middle East, the war is in our neighborhood in Iran. It has reached to Iran, uh, the spillover. And then we have a situation in Afghanistan, and we have a new uh, Bharat. I would say, the, uh, with the Hindutva mentality. So a lot of security and uh, security and humanitarian crisis are already in this region. And also, we must keep in mind the situation in the uh, Indo-Pacific, this uh, Washington's strategy in Indo-Pacific, that also impact on the outcome and the future of such organizations. And one more thing which I have missed is the inaction and inability of United Nations for the conflict resolution. So in this overall uh, scenario, the SEO meeting is, uh, was of a prime importance. Then there have been try, uh, uh, our neighbors have been trying to isolate Pakistan. I think that that, that phenomena, uh, that thought is now buried. And uh, over the past few months, a lot of excises, a lot of uh, dignitaries coming to Pakistan. So Pakistan has become a key regional and international player. So without uh, focusing more on India, to be very honest, mm -hmm. I think if they are, they are cooperating in this, because they will always try to undermine such organizations because they have their own security and economic uh, forums. So they are part of the strategy, the Washington-led strategy with the West uh, against rising China. So their interests are lying somewhere. Though they are trying to, you know, the famous phenomena and famous saying, which we say that they're trying to run with the hills, but they are hunting with the hounds. So they're, they're all almost over there. But Pakistan will have to, maybe in the later in the program, we can talk about what future strategy, what future diplomatic initiatives Pakistan should take. But this is the overall environment, and this can be a very good start for Pakistan to collaborate with Russia, to collaborate with China, and most importantly for me, to collaborate with the Central Asian Republic. Because now we have a lot of threat which is emanating from Afghanistan, in which India is a partner. Unfortunately, we thought that there will be an order in that country. But uh, coming over to the security concerns of Pakistan, I just want to begin with this. I mean, the, whatever is coming out of Afghanistan, it's challenging. It's challenging for Pakistan. It's alarming for Pakistan. And remember, it is not only alarming for Pakistan. It is alarming for the uh, China. It is alarming for the Russia. It is alarming for the Central Asian Republic. And it is alarming for Iran. So a lot of threat is emanating in form of extremism and terrorism. And this terrorism has become the instrument of policy for India and it has become the instrument of policy for the Afghan uh, interim government because they have no control uh, on their country and the sufferers of people of this region. So considering all this environment, Pakistan has an opportunity to carve a better strategy while remaining relevant to the rest of the world as well. I'm not saying that they should get into this block and they should not, uh, they should not have good relations with uh, West and the United States, but they must pursue their policy objectives, foreign policy objectives, with a lot of superior strategy. Thank you. Right, absolutely. Um, Julia, I want your perspective on this as well, especially in terms of the kind of multilateral collaboration we're looking for, but also add to that the kind of Russian perspective that you can help us understand, particularly when it comes to developing the entire region and collaborating with the SEO member states uh, beyond whatever bilateral relations uh, we may have with each other. I want your take on what Russia sees uh, when, it, when it sees the SEO and what sort of a perspective exists uh, in the country um, and in the government to take this forward as a framework for all. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. That's a great honor for me to be part of the discussion this evening. Um, 
Well, considering Russia's perspective on the SEO, I think the focus has always been multilateral. So initially, the SEO was created in order to balance uh, the potential differences with China in Central Asia and simultaneously um, to create the uh, safe space in Central Asia protected from the three evils, as we know, extremism, separatism and terrorism. What we see these days uh, is uh, the functional and geographic enlargement of the SEO. Uh, so the SEO is now bigger in terms of membership. So we now have 10 members, right? And it's also bigger in terms of functions. And these two bifurcation points are extremely important for Russia's foreign policy in the region and for Russia's understanding of the role that the SEO can play in its regional policy. And I think that for Russia, it's very important now to decide um, whether it agrees with where the organization is going or whether it doesn't. And let me explain why. Because um, from the very beginning, Russia was um, not insisting, but Russia was in favor of keeping the SEO as security organization for the region. Because there were a lot of security problems that Russia was supposed to face uh, if they were not combated on the borders of Central Asian Republic. Uh, and there were a lot of common threats, uh, non-traditional security threats uh, for the member states. And this situation remains. So as Mr. Mahmoud had already put it, uh, the challenges haven't gone anywhere. So there are still a lot of security challenges that all SEO member states face, maybe except for Belarus. So Belarus is closer to the West. So the Eurasian security threats are not as much of a thing for Belarus as for other nations. However, what we see, and I think it was very vividly um, reflected in today's declaration, uh, what we see is that the SEO is now going elsewhere. So the mandate of the organization has been expanding. It, uh, so the organization has an ambition, or at least the member states have an ambition uh, to um, not just perform the security functions, but also use it as a tool for uh, enhancing economic cooperation for enhancing connectivity cooperation, because there's been a lot of talk about Belt and Road Initiative and how it may play out on the SEO uh, land mass area. Uh, and on the one hand, so like what we see, like SEO is transcending from security organization to a complex organization which deals with both development and security. And on the one hand, it is a good thing because Russia has been developing its greater Eurasian partnership vision, this concept, there is no concept paper as of now yet, but it's definitely one of the foreign policy ideas that Russia has been numerously promoted on numerous occasions. And uh, starting with June, we also have the idea of Eurasian security framework, not just greater Eurasian partnership, but also Eurasian security framework. And these are the two foreign policy ideas for Eurasia as a region that Russia has. And if we take the situation in the SEO, we can actually see that now the SEO is becoming a perfect platform to bring those visions to life. But this is just on the one hand. On the other hand, we have Russia's traditional understanding of the SEO as a security organization. Uh, and this is where uh, I think additional thinking is needed. And not just actually from Russia, but from all member states. Like if we are expanding the portfolio, which seems very up to date and very necessary is in the current conditions, then how do we position the SEO as a multilateral format? Uh, because for me personally, and this is my perspective, has nothing to do with the government perspective, uh, I no, guess. No. If we take the multilateral platform, and I think this refers to your second question, like whether multilateral or bilateral dimension is more important, then it has to have its own purpose. Because if it's just for us uh, to strike bilateral deals, then why keeping the SEO? Uh, we can do bilateral deals without it. Russia enjoys good relationship with China, with Pakistan, with India, with Central Asian Republic bilaterally. Then why having a format where there are more than oh, like 10, 10, 10 members? Uh, and this is where, it's, I'm not saying that we don't need it. I'm just saying that we, if it's expanding, then we have to think of its role and of its function and create a name for it, for this role, and articulate where we are going all together as a multilateral platform.
Absolutely, and, and I totally understand the perspective that you're giving and your own as well in terms of um, how do we see the future of SEO. And Faisal, I want your take on that because we've spoken about what, what is more important or, or, or what, what would be um, considered more important um, in whatever relationship we have with each country, whether it's bilateral or multilateral. And I want your take on when we see SEO's future and when we talk about and reiterate the need for this multilateral platform to flourish and exist. And this is what the Prime Minister also talked about addressing um, the heads of government council today. It's important to underscore what exactly would that mean or what sort of mechanism we're, we're actually looking at and whether or not it is going to be more important and integral over the bilateral relations that we have. And of course, there is there is Russia, that, that example that was given by Julia in terms of its relationship with each other countries, but there are others that all have problems or they have certain conflicts bilaterally, including, of course, Pakistan and India. So I want your take in how do we see SEO then transcend all of that and result in the kind of collaboration we're looking for. Yes, and obviously, uh, when I was uh, listening to Julia, Julia highlighted that if uh, there is uh, nothing uh, like that all of the countries are agreeing on something, then, of course, uh, it's just the uh, bilateral. If we talk about the bilateral, then, of course, Russia is having relations with all of the countries, and same is the case with, uh, of course, China as well. This is a forum where uh, matters of uh, mutual interest must be resolved, and there are many challenges faced by all of these countries. And when we, of course, uh, you know, uh, talk about uh, the security challenges, Russia and China and uh, Belarus and few of the uh, Central Asian Republic uh, states as well, they have another forum for uh, security, and that is CSTO. They already are members of it. And, of course, they are uh, facing uh, uh, whatever the fa challenges are being faced by all of these countries. They are countering them with the CSTO. And somehow, I mean, uh, maybe in coming future, that membership might be extended to all the uh, SCO states uh, in coming future. But that is, of course, uh, for the future. But coming back to SCO, I mean, uh, when we talk about SCO connectivity and uh, trade amongst all of the countries, that has lots of challenges. And then challenges are, of course, related to, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, Minister for External Affairs of India has rightly pointed out, and I would endorse his statement when he says that uh, three evils of terrorism, extremism, and separat separatism, they must not be promoted in other countries, and I think uh, he needs to look into his own uh, backyard as well, what they are doing against Pakistan. When we talk about separatism, of course, they, they are investing in Pakistan, uh, in BLA, BLF, and uh, uh, TTP. When we talk about uh, uh, you know extremism, of course, they have been doing it since a long time in Pakistan, through Afghanistan, with uh, uh, hand and glove, uh, with the previous regime of Afghanistan, they have been doing it, and still they are doing it uh, w with the help of a certain resource they have uh, on ground. When we talk about terrorism, well, everyone knows, and Pakistan has time and time and again given the dossiers to European Union, dossiers to our friendly states like uh, Russia, like China. We have given all of the dossiers to United Nations as well, and this is the tra track record of. Uh, the Minister for External Affairs of uh, the very country we are talking about r right now, the one who actually came up with these kind of uh, uh, statements. And when we talk about, uh, you know, extremism, of course, nobody can differ when I say that uh, right now India is the country that is being run by extreme extremist thought. I mean, Hindutva ideology, and that is what has been happening in India. So I think they need to fix their own backyard first and then give lectures to others. And when we talk about, yes, these aspects, they are very important, and Pakistan must fully endorse this statement. But of course, this needs to be checked who's doing it and who is uh, a, a beneficiary of uh, these things. And uh, when we talk about, you know, uh, 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 connectivity, of course, uh, there is a spoiler called, called India. And once again, I mean, the North-South uh, Transport Corridor, who comes up with these kind of uh, ideas? It's India. And parallel to what? CPAC. Of course, CPAC is connecting with BRI, China and Pakistan. They have their endeavors. China wanted a connectivity with the, uh, you know, African countries, with the uh, Middle Eastern countries, and they came up with this idea. And of course, Pakistan is benefiting from it, and it is going to be a booster for Pakistan's economy as well in coming future. And here we are. Once more, India comes to 
Iran and seeks Chabahar a port and starts what? North-South transport, uh, uh, you know, corridor just to equate and just to give another uh, sort of alternate to CPAC. And why they are doing it? They are doing it just because that they are sitting in this forum and still doing it against two of the countries. And of course, they have, uh, you know, started uh, 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 since almost 10 years, they started portraying as if they are uh, the policemen of the region, uh, of course, uh, with the help of uh, Americans. And that is why they have been, uh, you know, getting uh, military assistance from Americans as well, Chinooks, Apaches, and their naval forces getting enhanced for what? There's only one reason. They just wanted to keep a check on China, and that is what they're doing in South China Sea. East China Sea is secured for the Americans. South China Sea, India is claiming to secure it, and uh, uh, once again, sitting in the SEO and giving others the lectures, I think there are challenges that need to be highlighted, and mm. them challenges are related to, of course, connectivity, and the uh, challenges related to the uh, of course, the atmosphere which we are sharing, all of these countries, I mean, we are talking about more than 45% of the population of the world. And we have the challenges related to global warming. We have the challenges related to, uh, you know, uh, our environment. Right. And we need to discuss that in the SCO as well. So I think it's a, it's a brilliant forum and the kind of uh, statement, a joint statement which we are uh, uh, seeing, the mutual statement which uh, has appeared, I think it is, uh, 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 it is heartening to see that still we are heading towards the bilateral trade, trade to be increased and of course the connectivity needs to be improved. And one more thing which I wanted to add here, Sana, there are sanctions on certain countries that are member states of SEO. I'm talking about Iran. Iran has sanctions over it. And I think so does Russia. Uh, Russia as well. Russia and Iran, they are facing sway sanctions and both of these countries, of course, they uh, highlight they need to highlight uh, this aspect in the seo as well that in case of sanctions mm. what is the mechanism we have to of course trade uh, amongst the member states of seo and what kind of uh, you know uh, parameters they will right. be having in coming future and mm. of course we are hearing that uh, uh, dollarism would be decreased in the world and when we talk about SCO, of course, we, we will be having another currency, but not the dollars for uh, mutual trade. And I right. think that's a, that's a very good step forward. Right. And Farooq, I'd like your perspective on that. Uh, firstly, of course, on the joint declaration, um, on the kind of aspects that all the member states are agreed upon. And while a lot of it is welcome and encouraging in terms of what is being discussed and the kind of sustainable collect uh, collective future that we're, we're envisioning, um, I also want, again, uh, your take on uh, how is it that we're going to ensure that it actually does happen and whether or not this mechanism of making things possible, be it for economy or trade or security, uh, will be something uh, that will be that, that can be possible. It's not simple at all. It's n not as simple as Pearson seems to be portraying also. But in terms of make, making that move or going towards that, I want your take on how we can do it because if we if we do want to de-dollarize, for example, if we do want to increase trade with each other, if we do want to go beyond sanctions yeah. or find a mechanism to overcome them, how is it that we're going to do it? Uh, right, Sana. Uh, 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 regarding your last uh, last question, last part of the question, uh, uh, regarding uh, our balance of payment and currency issues, mm. Pakistan's uh, state bank and uh, China's uh, central bank actually signed a currency swap agreement. Mm. So that is one way. But I don't think the target is dollar. The, the purpose is to ensure that the country's flight of capital doesn't take place, right? Uh, Pascal use a cu cu curious term called dollarism. So of all the uh, isms I've heard, <laughs> I, I find this one most appealing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because dollar is dollar, right? Uh, <laughs> but regarding overall situation, first of all, let me actually, uh, uh, you know, pay compliments to the uh, uh, two honorable guests, uh, Gerald Saab and Julia as well. And I, I think that, uh, uh, first of all, I wanted to speak about Pakistan's endurance because uh, just to refresh everybody's uh, memory, 10 years ago, when a terrorist uh, struck APS Peshawar, at that time, because terrorism was so rampant, Pakistan was left for dead. Uh, the world started saying that this country cannot survive this onslaught, but we did. 
uh, two years ago, we were told that this country is going to become, uh, is going to default, it is going to go bankrupt. And now uh, the world knows better. Uh, I think that in coming days, once again, and by the way, there were people who were saying that Pakistan is going to be isolated. Surprise, surprise, they were also on the table today. Mm -hmm. uh, with that kind of, uh, you know, achievements uh, under our belt, uh, now we can actually charge ahead with all form of multilateral forums and all bilateral, you know, progress as well. Uh, regarding, um, uh, you know, uh, Indian, uh, uh, you know, arrival and Indian uh, foreign minister's presence here, Faisal must have actually read the speech, and I think that speech is usually because there's so much, uh, um, uh, you know, institutional, institutional muscle memory. So a lot of that was something that has been repeated, you said. But to naive me, what, uh, what appealed was the change of uh, demeanor, um, very cordial demeanor. And then there was an attempt to con connect as well. So I think that these things augur well for our uh, you know, interactions with India as well. I hope in coming days we see something uh, transpiring. Of course, we are the host, so I'm not going to actually indulge in any trash talk, right? Hmm. Uh, uh, now, uh, um, uh, I was listening to Julia, and she was talking about the importance of this as a security collective. And, uh, uh, of course, um, yesterday when we were listening to Farshid Sahab from Iran, he was also talking about security issues, but he was talking about other circumstances regarding Israel, Iran. Uh, you know, any country that is um, under this kind of pressure, uh, like Russia, and by the way, Russia has proven uh, beyond anybody's doubt how, how much a strong state it is, because um, sanctions started a while ago, and despite that, their economy keeps on growing mm. and g getting s uh, solidified. Similarly, their uh, security, their defenses are not penetrable either. So I think that, that that actually speaks to itself. But usually what happens is that people uh, or countries start seeing a lot of politics where perhaps politics is not, uh, is barely there, right? Uh, I think SEO's main purpose is defined in its title. It, is, uh, it was born in Shanghai. It is a cooperation organization. So, of course, uh, that would also, um, uh, uh, you know, emphasize on working together uh, uh, in fighting terrorism, in, uh, you know, uh, stabilizing the region. But the first thing I think, and this time, uh, what actually really warmed the cockles of my heart, uh, this is happening third or fourth time, that whatever I'm seeing on television, mm -hmm. I feel that that is also reflected on paper. So uh, that means that my heart is resonating with the product that comes out. Uh, the emphasis on economic development and mm. connectivity and, uh, you, you know, bringing this region together is amazing, Sana. Forty percent of world's population sits here. Uh, uh, it is one-third of global economy or GDP. With that kind of powerhouse, you know, uh, when we are sitting, it is sad that our, our bilateral trades our, um, uh, you know, incidents of poverty, they all are horrible. India, Pakistan, and umpteen other states in SEO are, uh, you know, they, uh, they have this huge mass of poor. And I think that economic activity can really stabilize these issues simultaneously. Or remember that the climate change issues are also existential. So uh, in Prime Minister's speech today, in today's declaration also, what I found was huge, huge avenue of hope. And I think that grows in coming days as well, including, by the way, Faisal, India-Pakistan cooperation. I hope that that is achieved. Uh, regarding uh, terrorism, extremism, I understand what you were saying. And I, you know my views as well. But the point is, at this moment, uh, when it comes to partners, we cannot afford to actually keep on looking uh, only at the negative side of picture, right? Um, India might, uh, might have extreme, uh, extremism. It might be uh, elsewhere as well. But if there is a possibility of cooperation, why not? We can work together. 
Um, uh, and in the end, uh, when it comes to uh, joint corporation, this was uh, C CSG, Council of uh, Head of Governments. Uh, the word has said that there is going to, uh, going to be a CHS uh, as well. Okay. Uh, and that is a uh, uh, Unicouncil Council of Head of States. And hopefully that is going to take place in Pakistan as well hmm. in near future. So when that happens, we are going to further celebrate it because A, that so, uh, it shows a lot of progress. Yesterday, you were talking about one uh, concern that these joint declarations are there. MOUs might be there, but there is no enforcement mechanism. Yeah. So we saw this time also that SEO is actually uh, trying to evolve that mechanism. And if that develops, because they passed budget, they are working on b banks and business councils across the region. If that starts, things are going to right. really look up. Right. Uh, General Sab, I want your perspective on this as well, particularly in terms of the security dimension. We, we've seen the Prime Minister address a um, number of important issues, and among them was uh, uh, the issue of Afghanistan and the fact that we need a stable and peaceful Afghanistan, and that's important for the entire region as well. But I want your take on what can the platform do in this regard and what sort of collaborative measure can be taken of course, Pakistan um, is, is somebody who's directly facing this particular issue with safe havens in Afghanistan. But these, of course, have the potential to impact the entire region as well and have done so in the past too. So I want your perspective in what can be done through the SEO platform, particularly through the structure of RADS uh, that is embedded within the SEO uh, with the regional anti-terrorism structure that is important uh, to move forward in terms of this collaboration and whether or not we can actually see um, some sort of momentum with reference to Afghanistan? I think <clears throat> Sanam, we have come to a point that now there's no doubt that this is uh, one thing on which we can collaborate more effectively through RADS is the common threat. Now, Afghanistan has become a common threat and that land, that uh, country which is in disorder is being used and manipulated by mm -hmm. India. So this is a lethal combination going on over, over there. You know, I always advocate that uh, before this conference, I, I wanted and I was, uh, I mean, I wanted that at least uh, our, our, our CSO, uh, our countries should have contacted Afghan government. They must have brought, uh, they should have tried to bring some uh, diplomat or some um, uh, government uh, representative here, you know, because it is affecting the people of Afghanistan and the whole region. So Afghanistan was missing. I think we should have made a little more effort to bring them in. So the common threat, I have been part of, I have attended a few meetings of RATS also. Uh, Faisal has talked about the CSTO. Uh, Faisal, I can tell you that, honestly telling you that uh, always there is scuttler in the, in the, in the, in the group, uh, in the, these uh, sub-organizations, uh, and that is India. Even today, once uh, in the declaration, they sometimes opt out of the declaration also, like uh, the, the point which was about the BRI today, probably they have abstained from uh, being part of that. So in the CSTO, I have seen many a times, I have been, I have seen the agendas once we were making agendas for that, that uh, India used to abstain from uh, many points, you know. So they always preferred their own objectives. One is the concerns of India. If they are doing it for their concerns and genuine threats which are to India, are the genuine things happening against India, then it is understandable that you are uh, doing it for your country. But sometimes you have taken a position uh, about this extremism and terrorism. You have spoken about, uh, you know, uh, their uh, application against Pakistan. You know, this country, India, it has taken this extremism and terrorism to Canada, to U.S., to all parts of the world, so you think that China is not, China is already their objective uh, through Pakistan in the CPEC projects. It is a common object, uh, a common enemy for India, that is Pakistan and India, uh, Pakistan and China, sorry. Uh, other day I was uh, on a program with a Indian uh, journalist, Sharma, you know. So during the uh, debate, he was very categorical in telling me that, you know, there is no bad uh, issue of security related to the people. Everything, every country pursue their objectives for the economy. So they talk about the pockets, they talk about the economy where humanity has no respect. So this kind of India is there. Now coming back to Afghanistan, you know, we have to deal with this 
uh, this Afghanistan, if we have to have a successful application in terms of the security and economy, you can't have, uh, without security, all the economic objectives related to the economy of uh, this organization cannot be pursued, cannot be achieved without proper security. So we have to have, uh, we have to secure Afghanistan in all respects, in all aspects of the, you know, uh, government functioning. So this is a common uh, agenda. This is a common point where we all can collaborate. Of course, right. India will never like to do that. But uh, at least those members who consider that this is a threat for them, this is not going to help them in achieving their economic and political objectives but in the region. Sahab, but General Sahib, how are we going to look at that successfully from the SEO platform if no, all member states are actually not on board? Rats, again, we have to use the existing forums. But we have to put, you know, next presidency is with probably, if I'm not wrong, it is with the China. So China will have more Russia. opportunity. Russia, Russia can Russia. join together. Russia. Sorry, Russia. And uh, Russia and China, you can, you see, we can fix, the, fit, uh, we can identify the agenda for the future. All right. Already China has offered for some common training and all that. So China and Russia will have to be on board. And please, we need to understand, we should not ignore the uh, Central Asian uh, states. They, they must get their due share in all their problems, you know, because once you start ignoring the smaller states, the organization it lose its value. That same thing has happened in SARC, you know. So uh, India would never like that CS, uh, this uh, SEO gains that stature, which challenges their other, I mean, like BRICS and uh, NATO and other uh, security and economic uh, uh, organizations. So they will keep it, they will remain part uh, and parcel of this organization, but they will never contribute positively to have more effective. So we need to have more effective agendas, and right. then with aggressive, uh, aggressively we should pursue those agendas. You know, if right. some countries not. I absolutely understand your point. Uh, let me also get in uh, Julia's perspective on that because it's important, of course, uh, to see uh, how we see the future of the SEO. And, of course, um, as uh, this uh, chairmanship is going to be going to Russia next year, we, of course, will be seeing this very important meeting being hosted there, too. And so I want your perspective, Julia, on what sort of a role Russia can actually play in making sure that the countries and the member states as part of the SEO are agreed on working together on important concerns such as anti-terrorism and through the structure of rats embedded within the SEO. And also add to that uh, the role that Russia can play uh, in the context of security dynamics within the region as well, particularly in terms of anti-terrorism. We have seen uh, that um, uh, there have been attacks on Russia as well, so it's not something uh, that, that is new to Russia, of course, uh, we saw a very unfortunate incident in Moscow earlier this year as well. So the, 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 the fact that anti-terrorism is something that collectively uh, affects us all, um, we can benefit from each other's collaboration. But how, how do we see the involvement of these countries with each other, keeping in mind the dynamics of the region? Yeah, thank you for the question. I will probably start answering from the last one and moving on to the first one. So like, if I forget, then please kindly remind me of that, what that was. But uh, regarding terrorism, I think that this is one of the issues, and that's gonna be a bad word for describing this particular situation, but uh, this is one of the issues with which the SEO might be comfortable uh, to uh, use it and to work uh, together to establish more trust and uh, to uh, have more trust uh, um, incidents in a way, uh, because uh, the SEO has been doing it quite success success successfully since it was created. So the, first of all, I think that the benefit that the SEO has in order to combat terrorism is the institutional structure. So unlike bilateral um, relationship as that, or unlike uh, other organizations that do not, that cannot boast of institutional structure, the SEO does have it, and that's already a huge, um, I would say, um, advantage. Because, for example, BRICS doesn't have it, and I know that there's been a lot of talk uh, about uh, turning BRICS into anti-terrorism organization as well, or creating a structure similar to RATS in uh, the SEO. Uh, so here we do not have to invent anything; we already have it and uh, the member states have enjoyed uh, such common practices as uh, anti-terrorist um, uh, trainings, and uh, I think it is very important. So now it is very important to, to ensure that new member states also take part. 
Uh, and this is a matter of conversations and a matter of diplomacy, but also a matter of common practices. You know, there is this whole political theory of practices that says that practices, like repeated actions that member states of the same organization perform together, not necessarily this should be uh, military exercises or anti-terrorist exercises, but this can be information exchanges, this can be uh, roundtables, seminars uh, for the officials, military officials, anti-terrorism officials, uh, in exchanging the ways how they do that. So like the more uh, regular such practices are, the theory says, um, uh, the, more, um, uh, the more we can hope for better trust to be achieved. So I think that here w what we need to do is to just bring everyone on board and talk, talk, talk more. Uh, by everyone, I mean not just us experts, but officials as well. And do something together. Maybe not all together, but like two people, three people, two nations, three nations, five nations, so on and so forth, and then uh, make it usable for everyone and share the results, the minutes of the meetings with everyone so that everyone could just take something for themselves from that common experience. Uh, and this is concerning terrorism. And the previous question was what Russia can do right uh, as the next chair after China and like what tasks are in front of it. So I can speak about the tasks again. Uh, I think that the tasks in front of Russia would be to marry these two dimensions of the SEO development and security, because we can't avoid any of them in the near future, and uh, to uh, try to create this image of the SEO, uh, because Russia is now in the center. So geographically, it's in the center of the new SEO structure. And uh, it is important for Russia to create the image uh, how the SEO can turn into the Eurasian backbone, the institution behind the vision of Eurasia. And this is, you didn't ask about that, but I would want to reflect uh, on what uh, my colleagues have already stated. I personally see, I personally see connectivity is a, as a very potentially fruitful sphere for marrying development and security, because infrastructure is important for security, but it is as important for development. So you can trade if you have railroads, but you can also make sure that you're safe if you have connections via roads, rails, and so on and so forth, because you can also use it for security purposes. And here, the, the I think, well, now it may sound like a wishful thinking, but if we look at the Eurasian landscape, we will see several connectivity initiatives that compete with one another. It's like the Belt and Road, where Russia actually doesn't participate as a single member, yeah, so the position has been that Russia is too big to be a recipient of the program. So it's only about linking the Eurasian Economic Union and Belt and Road as of now. Nevertheless, so we have Belt and Road. We also have North-South Transport Corridor, which I'm not sure, like, I mean, I would want to ignore that fact, but that was not just India, but also Russia and Iran who established the project back in 2000. And wow. after the special military operation started, Russia um, has been... Um, it has doubled its efforts to um, complete uh, the missing uh, linkages in Azerbaijan and Iran in order to make the corridor functional, because it's an analogy to Transcaspian Middle Corridor, and it's very important to, for, for Russia-Iranian trade now, since the uh, free trade area has been signed between the Eurasian Economic Union and Iran last year, the full-fledged free trade area. So. One of the linkages, but also India has its own initiative, but there is also China-Pakistan transport corridor. So all these things, they do not necessarily have to compete, but how it can uh, contribute to this common uh, infrastructural network. It's a matter of how you sell the network. So like we have to sell it somehow, like the, uh, the, the officials have to think about how to make sure that everyone thinks that these network is common, that it's safe to use any of these railroads. I don't know how this can be done, but this sounds like a logical thing. <laughs> right, absolutely. But that, that's a great suggestion and a valid point in terms yeah. of how we should focus on collaboration and not competition. But thank you very much, uh, Julia Belnikova, for joining us. And thank you, General Zahid Mahmoud, for joining us and being a part of the discussion. And of course, we'll be continuing talking about the SEO in the next hour as well. But we will take a short break for the headlines and we'll be right back.